Good, so we'll just wait a little bit, Tonya, until the participants pick up. Okay. I think there's like 20 now. Okay. Yeah. Good, we can, we'll start. So hi, um, thanks for joining us this afternoon. This is our second Psalm session that we are doing uh, during these times of COVID in, in lieu of our Psalm symposium. Um, I'm David Gates, I'm Senior Vice President of uh, Vineyard Operations at Ridge and I am really excited and happy that Tonya Pitts can join us. So Tonya is a number of things and a lot of things and we're going to talk about probably all of them. She's a sommelier, wine director at One Market. She's a wine writer and um, lecturer. Uh, she is a consultant, wine and food consultant. And she is a mentor under um, many different auspices, uh, different organizations. So Tonya, thank you very much for joining us and uh, welcome. Thank you for having me uh, on today, David. It's uh, really really exciting and uh, have been a long time, um, a long time friend to the winery and have sold the wines and drank the wines and, and talked about the wines for many, many years and have loved the wine. So super excited to have some 2018 Ridge Litton Springs and Ridge Pagani Ranch uh, Zinfandel's uh, respectfully in my my glass this afternoon for us to talk about that and just awesome. all things Zinfandel and what the world looks like right now. <laughs> Very good. So um, I, I had a question um, about um, San Francisco and the restaurant scene. So you guys just went to um, the, what is it, the yellow, which means that, that they're going to eventually, hopefully allow some inside dining. Um, well, some some folks have already started um, okay. indoor dining, and um, it's it's interesting because you've either got some people that are doing indoor dining, um, a bit of indoor dining, depending, depending upon how large their restaurant is. Right. But what I'm seeing is everyone is still doing the outdoor dining um, as well. You have to um, because of economics; you cannot survive. But just having things indoor, um, and there are those that you know had been closed all of this time and have opened up again, but they're opening up with uh, outdoor seating. Um, we're much more fortunate uh, than a lot of other places around the country where the weather is changing significantly, and uh, they're going to need heaters and you know it snows, it rains. It's it's going to be interesting to see what a lot of restaurant tours come up with to be able to stay viable and stay in business um, as well as proprietors. Yeah, yeah um, I know. That. So, you know, San Francisco is like in it. Well, pre-COVID, it was an hour from, from Ridge for Montebello. Um, now it's like less than an hour, which is cool, but I really miss it. I know that um, SF MoMA is now open and the De Young. So I, I think um, we'll be planning a trip up there at some point, but it's, it's just one of, the, one of the things of COVID I, and I miss the restaurants in San Francisco too. So, ah. but, but hopefully that will start up. In that, yeah. you know, a lot of us miss um, just working even and, and what that looks like um, as well. You know, there are those of us that were, you know, working five, six days a week and on the floor for, for lunch and for dinner and seeing our customers, which are also our community and our restaurant family, which is also our community and just trying to keep up with everybody, making sure everyone is, is safe and to be as supportive um, as we, you know, all can be, which uh, leads me into a segue to talk about United uh, Sommeliers Foundation, which I'm also on the board, um, which offers grants and assistance to um, 
folks that are in the restaurant industry, whether you are a sommelier, a tasting room worker, if you are also someone that works in the vineyards as well, that assistance is there. So, so please check out uh, United Sommelier Foundation. Um, whether you're looking for a grant for relief for that, or if you are someone that's been evicted, uh, affected by uh, the wildfires that have struck um, around the country yeah. as well. And if you want to donate, donate. Sounds good. Need donations, yes. please, <laughs> to keep all of this going. Yes. That we've all been so uh, successful with, um, all of my peers that are there with me. And the founders, uh, Chris Blanchard, Master Sommelier, and, and Christy Norman. Uh, no, that's Master awesome. Sommelier, so. And yeah. Antonia, that's that's just one of the many organizations that you are actively, actively involved in. Batonage, Wine Unify, Black Wine Professionals. I'm, yeah. I know I'm forgetting some. Um, Diversity and Wine Leadership Forum. Yeah. It's like, I don't know how you find time to do everything that you do, but it's, it's really, really cool. Um, it's... It was necessary, and I also think that with the shift in working and being in the pandemic and COVID, uh, it made me realize that I have been mentoring all along, but when Martin Reyes, uh, Master of Wine, and Delyn Proctor reached out to me and uh, Mary Market Mechanic when they were putting together Wine Unified, I said, absolutely, but I just don't want to be a mentor. I'd like to also be on the advisory board and be an ambassador and it all kind of snowballed from there. And I realized that it was really something that was needed within our community, um, not just within uh, the restaurant community, but across the board within um, our hospitality and, and wine industry. And so I am lending my voice to, to all of these um, organizations because it's needed and not just me, but if you think that you are called to be a mentor and that's one thing, mentorship, you know, doesn't have to be this long um, drawn out um, thing. It can also be something that is in bite-sized pieces. I'm very much a believer in mentorship um, could be a phrase, words of encouragement, taking a moment to have a conversation with someone that's very important within their work and, and, and decision-making within their careers or just within their life. You know, that cup of coffee, that five minutes that you spend, it's all you know, a thread within that thread, it's a thread in a ribbon and it just keeps flowing and going. And, you know, people come in and, and out of your life with, as a mentor, you know, you may have that person in the very beginning and then they're there in the middle and they're just there continuously. And so that's what all of these organizations are offering um, as well as access to education, um, wines, um, because that's another thing, not having, you know, the wines to taste through, you know, as we grow in our careers, wine becomes very expensive, but it's also not always accessible um, as well. And depending upon, you know, what route you want to take within your education, whether it's the Court of Master Sommeliers, or Wine Spirits Trust, you know, it, it's all very different. But the fact of the matter is, the wines are all classic for, for both organizations. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and speaking of education, uh, you, you are, as usual, um, continuing in your education. And you, are, uh, you just won an award with, through Laurent Perrier and Wine Unify, is it? For, no, it's with Drew no, Black, for, Black, yeah, Black, by White, Black Wine yeah. Professional. That's it, yes. Julia yeah, Coney, for, yeah, absolutely. Champagne Super. Master. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, that, that sounds like um, something that. Would, that would be very fun. So it's uh, <laughs> over the past two weeks, all my memories that keep popping up on Facebook and Instagram, it's all champagne. And I realized it's like, wow, okay, so this is all appropriate, which is 
happening now. Um, I always say to chef, we, we know it's going to be a great day when we're starting off with champagne <laughs> right before lunch, you know, for a tasting. So champagne has, has been in my life for many years as Ridge Zinfandel um, has been. I got started in the restaurant industry very young. I started out as a host and I actually couldn't drink, but I was working at a French restaurant in St. Louis and we would have these really great family meals at the end of the night. And mm -hmm. so there was wine on the table and all kinds of wine on the table, but I couldn't drink. So I would just sit there, swirl, sniff, you know, smell and talk about what was in the glass. And there were those that were around me that were professional um, wine people, you know, bar managers, sommeliers, and realized that I had a palate and they, they nurtured that. And quite frankly, throughout my career, it's, it's been that way. I've been very blessed um, to have that, but not realizing that it's something that I could have done and that was a calling for me. And quite frankly, I didn't see people um, that looked like me. I saw restaurants as a, a means to support myself while I was at university. Um, I had never thought of, of being a sommelier or a, a wine director. And if you'd asked me many years ago that this is what it was going to be, I said, no way. You know, I'm gonna be a lawyer. Then I shifted gears with that and it was art. And um, that over the years has turned into the plate and food being my, my canvas and my paints being the imagery and tasting of, of wine and those pairings and how that works together and what you create for someone, the visuals, because it's all sensory, sensory imagery. It is, you know, exactly. not just with the plate, but with, with the wine, um, and what it evokes. Um, our little community, well, it's actually, it's a big community, but. It um, is, yes. Know. Yeah. I really um, like those, those descriptions, because that it is, it's basically art and wine really do go together. And it's, it's like, and I, I kind of say that in the vineyard in the same way, pruning a vine, it's not just, it can be very mechanical and rote, but not really, not, not with old head trained Zinfandels like it mm -hmm. from the vines that are growing at Lytton Springs or the Pagani Ranch. Those are actually little individuals and you have to kind of sculpt them and nurture them along. But um, anyway, that, that's, uh, that's really neat that, that you, have, you have done that. Um, I have a question about um, the way you have, you've put together many um, award-winning wine lists and where do you see Zinfandel on, on a wine list for, for a fine dining restaurant or for a bistro or, you know, you name it? People love Zinfandel, but I also think that they have this old fashioned thought that Zinfandel is going to be this very big and brawny, um, sometimes spicy, super juicy, fruit forward, um, wine. And there are those versions um, of Zinfandel. And that's the one thing. Variety is the spice of life on so many levels. And depending upon how you like Zinfandel, Zinfandel can be all of those things. You know, it can be much more akin to a um, Italian wine, um, if you would, because it has its roots in, in Italy and in Croatia mm -hmm. um, as well but it can also be this really easy drinking, quaffable um, beverage that you'd like to have just slightly chilled, um, all of those things. And so for me, when I put Zinfandel on a list, I like to show the many faces of Zinfandel. And I like to have Zinfandel that is super expressive. So, I have two places where Zinfandel lives. It lives in, in blends and it also lives in, in Zinfandel. And so it doesn't mean that necessarily Zinfandel 
section is just 100% Zinfandel, there are some Zinfandel blends, but if the blend is the majority of Zinfandel, then it's living uh, in that category. But, you know, as I open these bottles this afternoon, I opened them and I walked away for about seven minutes and came back and what just hit me was just the fruit and floral notes and dark juicy fruit and um, that would be Pagani Ranch and the Alicante Boucher is just singing um, in this wine uh, this afternoon. And there's also some Petite Syrah uh, um, within as well. And it's just yeah, fresh and, we're, and we're, you know, vibrant. Yes, yeah. we're very, very pleased with the 2018 uh, vintage as a whole for Zinfandel and the, the Pagani Ranch, the Lytton, Geyserville. We're, we're really happy with the way they, they've um, come out and they very um, different from 17 in that they are more open at a younger state. So, and, and not to say that they're not structured and won't age, but they're just beautiful right now. They're just, it's almost kind of come hither, if you would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you can drink me now. Please drink me now. <laughs> but you can, you know, put it aside and, and let it age and let it develop even more and have all those other nuances that come through. There's some hints of fennel and chocolate and violets um, that are there as well, but this huckleberry and blackberry and boysenberries um, that come through. You know, it, um, and there's a little bit of a creaminess mm -hmm. um, as well. I don't know if everyone knows what um, summerberry trifle. So, Not me. and it's so, okay. Summerberry yeah. trifle is, it's a dessert. And basically it's, li it's layers of um, white cake, almost like Andrew food cake mm -hmm. that is pressed. And in between those layers, it's these, dark berries and strawberry and you can throw in raspberries and blackberries um, and there's cream and there's uh, also a little bit of Grand Marnier that you can put into that infusion and it's all pressed and weighted down and it's served cold with a little bit of a uh, Chantilly cream over and wow. that's what that reminds me of and it's not it's not a sweet dessert it has the fruit and, and savoriness and, and florals that come through as well. And that's what, what this reminds me of. Now I'm, now I'm hungry. Last Tim, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> and I should probably, you know, uh, I'm always thinking of food and wine pairings whenever I'm tasting. It's just almost, it, it's automatic. But well, but, and that makes sense. Cause that's, you know, we, uh, we consider wine to be food part of food it's part of the table it's, it is meant to go with food of, of some sort especially zinfandels and and other red wines but yeah you know one thing with pagani ranch it, it's always one of the latest zins that we pick it sits in this little bowl in in sonoma between kenwood and glen ellen um, but one thing that we've seen over the last 10 years is um and this i i believe is is an effect of of global warming and not just in early vintages like this last vintage and, and 18 was, was a little bit early as well, but it's, we are picking it, uh, we were able to pick it earlier um, every year. It used to be that it, we would never pick it before the middle of October. And, um, and that's not the case anymore. It's getting closer and closer to our Dry Creek vineyards, our Lytton Springs vineyards. And which um, fr from a viticultural standpoint, uh, production standpoint, it's a little scary because we rely on Having, and most of our Zen vineyards are like within a eight mile radius of our winery at Little yeah. Springs. And so we rely on the wine, uh, vineyards like Pagani or Ponzo that are in a little bit cooler spots to kind of spread the harvest out so we don't get so jammed up. And, um, but the, I mean, that logistically, that, that's one thing that's happening with Pagani. It hasn't changed the, the overall 
sense of the wine yet though it still has really bright acidity it's always kind of on the cooler side of zin blueberries and and raspberries where the lit and springs has the broader shoulders a lot more tannin it's it typically is much more structured wine and um, darker fruits so you know i'll tell you Lytton Springs has always been one of those for me if someone comes into um, the restaurant or a restaurant uh, that I've ever run. It's one of those if they like um, Bordeaux, this is where I take them because as it ages, you get much more nuances of, of a Bordeaux blend there. So there's the red fruit, dark fruit, hints of orange and leather, shavings of chocolate um, and pencil shavings and things that are there as well. And so talk about shifting gears and giving someone a bottle of wine that is completely different from what they thought that they were going to, to have or what they asked for and having it work and having them be super excited and super, super happy um, with it. That's where Lytton Springs has, has always been uh, for me, the Zinfandel. And um, when we talk about many faces of Zinfandel, that's their two opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, yeah. You know, if you would, but it also has one of my, one of my favorite uh, varietals, uh, Mataro, which uh, I think, as I've always loved the wines, but what I completely got obsessed with was the Mataro that uh, was coming from um, Evangelino and uh, York Creek. It's just, wow, I think there was a year and it was in the 90s that I bought as much as I could for the restaurant, <laughs> but also bought a couple of cases for myself. And I recently drank my last bottle oh, fantastic. Of, uh, of 96. Just, wow. So uh, what I say to people is, you know, the Ridge wines, all of them, not just the Zinfandels, but Chardonnay and the Cabernets are beautiful out of the gate. But if you just give them a little bit of time, they just grow and morph into these exquisite wines with even more layers. The layers just become um, much more graduated, um, if you would. So, you know, buy the wines, take one of those bottles and create a case and just put it aside and throw it in your cellar and come back to it, you will thank me. <laughs> that, that's great, great advice. Thanks, thanks, Donia, I love it. <laughs> and you'll be on a side note, you'll be happy to know that we are back into the Evangelo Vineyard in Contra Costa County in, uh, awesome. in Antioch, right awesome. next to um, Oakley. And so um, it's not going to, there's going to be some Ataro in it, but right. it's mostly a Carignan based wine. Um, that's what they grow mostly at Evangelo. So you'll, you'll be very happy to, um, to know that. Um, I believe we have the 2018 is out this month, I believe, but awesome. I'll, I'll uh, make sure that to send some your way. <laughs> uh, that also reminds me of the, the York Creek um, Petite Syrah, which yes. I don't know if people know, this is actually the last vintage for that wine. And that was, it started in 1971 was the yes. first bottling. So mm -hmm. get yourself some of that as well. Those of you that love Petite Sera, I love Petite Sera as well. And um, another one, just ageability, you know? Yeah, and those yeah. wines, it, it used to be with the York Creeks that that um, you you couldn't drink them when they were young. They were so tannic, but oh my yeah. gosh, they could age forever. This, the Quite a few from the 70s are still drinking really well today. In fact, I, I had just opened a 95, um, just a regular York Creek bottling, and it's singing right now. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. always, always fun. And see, I just took my, my first sip of, of Lytton and it's got that restraint that's always there, mm -hmm. you know? 
And I think that's the key. That's why it, you know, can, can transcend um, a wine list and, and go everywhere and also pair with a lot um, of different dishes. It's not just, you know, pork or barbecue or um, steak, you know, meaty fishes as well, you know, mm -hmm. seared ahi tuna um, with mushrooms, just all, all sorts of things. And depending upon the sauce, um, halibut, yeah, Alaskan halibut. Now, there you go again. You're, you're making me hungry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that's all right. Sorry. Um, you know, it, it, one, one thing with that is um, that I would say is that kind of goes back to uh, Paul Draper, um, who, yeah. you know, of course, long, long time winemaker, and he kind of instilled that on, on Eric Baher and John Only, our current winemakers yeah. and COOs, um, is that, and that's basically wine is, is food. It goes with food. And, and I think that's, you know, Paul always says that, that he, um, started drinking wine as an adult, basically, and in Europe. So it was yeah. wine with food, wine as part of the table. And, and those wines are all, all kind of showed some restraint. It doesn't mean that we can't make a pretty wild and exuberant Zinfandel, like Pagani Ranch can border yeah. on that most yeah. years, but it still can go with food. And that, that's something we always kind of tried, tried to do. And Ponzo. Yes, Ponzo, yeah. that, another cool climate, cool, cooler, spot for zen it's on, yeah. and it's on sandy soil too so the yeah. cannons are finer and um yeah it's softer and br brighter acidity yeah so, and yeah. that's the thing there's 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 acidity in all of these wines but they're they get the juices going and and flowing you want to have more to drink and you want to take another bite um of food but don't mistake that you know, if you would rather just pop a bottle of Pagani and and drink it, you can do that. Or pop a bottle of, you know, Ponzo and drink it, you know, you can. And with the wines that have been aged, you know, I, if I'm drinking aged wines, sometimes I don't always have food with it because I just want to watch it go and develop and and then start writing and and journaling about the wine I do that a lot oh that's too. great yeah that's fun because they can change so much in and yeah. from from being a little bit closed to maybe a little funky to just opening up and showing everything so it, it's it's um that's great and then when you match it up with uh music <laughs> you know your playlists what you got going you know it uh mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah turns into quite a session yes <laughs> So, so Tonya, what, what is up with you? What are you, what are you, um, tell me about uh, TonyaPitts.com or, or and, and what, what you're up to um, and what your aspirations are going forward. So still the restaurant, but the restaurant's not completely open for indoor dining. Um, takeaway, meal kit, um, just started a New York uh, Jewish deli pop-up, um, which is doing really well. And then I also have my, my other program and, and project that I kicked off probably last month, not quite two weeks ago, TonyaPitts.com, um, which is my consulting, wine consulting. So anywhere from virtual um, experiences, um, wine and food and a chef or wine, food and, and an artistic um, experience, public speaking. Um, also just working with, with wineries and, and branding and direct to um, consumer projects and things like that. And if they have a new product that they're thinking of taking them and guiding them through through that process and blending and tasting notes and, and, and all sorts of things, which I've kind of always done within my career. And uh, within being in the pandemic, it, I just put something together and just thought, what, what can I do with myself? Which I think a, a lot of other people um, 
my other colleagues in the industry have done the same, you know, pivoting as well as restaurants and chefs. What can we do to still thrive and to survive? And so that's what we've all had to do. Think of what we do do best and what could be helpful. And, you know, it's business, but it's also giving back as well, which is how the organizations um, have come up, you know, black wine professionals and making sure that everyone is visible and seen and mm -hmm. has everything that they need to, to thrive and to grow and wine unified and batonage forum um, roots fund which is focusing um, more on viticulture it seems which is very exciting because you don't see a lot of people of color um, within that you see some which those are usually the workers that are in the fields are even and running um, running those teams but mm -hmm. you don't see a lot of women um, either and so I think what this has allowed me to do is to take everything that I've done always anyway and to incorporate those, those um, initiatives and to help other people. So I've always worked with female winemakers. I've always worked with um, black winemakers and winemakers of color. Those have always been a part of my, my program. But now I can actually give back to, to everyone in that way that wants to um, get into our industry or, or has, has an interest, you know, myself and, and other mentors. So if you are interested in mentorship with uh, Wine Unify, we actually just finished our first round of level one um, and brought in 20, uh, 20 people and uh, 20 recipients and October 23rd, we start with level two, which if you are interested in pursuing uh, WSET two, um, access to mentorship, wine, um, Janice Robinson um, is uh, involved in that as well.com and to have the tasting notes and just to move forward. And uh, level three, I think will kick off in 2001. And the same with um, Batonage Forum as well. Um, the last round of mentees and mentors, you have to get in all of your applications by November 1st. And um, the focus with Batonage has always been female. Um, we do have some males that have offered to, to come in and to be uh, mentors as well. And I know that there have been some people that have been put up for that. But if you are interested in being a mentee, please go to the website and sign up. If you are interested in becoming a mentor, please go to the website and, and sign up. And that is a uh, batonage forum, uh, yeah. com. So just super, just exciting. Um, no, it's, it's really great. It's really giving yeah. back and, and for paying forward all those all those cliches but they really mean something especially the mentorship part that's so yeah. important um, to see it all the time my wife works in education and it's the same thing you really need a mentor if a yeah. kid has a mentor they can go a lot a lot further so that that's great it's it's so inspiring as are you Tonya um, thank you yeah no thank you and, and thank you very much for uh, for joining us and taking time out of your busy schedule for uh, and for for coming on and um, and being here and thanks for doing everything you do and thanks uh, so much for being such a great supporter of wine and food and ridge it's um it's really really good well it's our it's our wine community and it's we need it to be all inclusive you know we have it inclusive for for ourselves but it's hospitality it's the wineries it's the winemakers it's 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 all of it they are all our community and there are people out there that would like to be included within that and so that's what we're moving towards and um you know bipoc women trans everyone yeah. it's it's important you need to see yourself as well within what we do and representation is 
important. And we're not completely there yet, but we're getting there. You know, everyone needs to be made to feel welcome. It's called hospitality for exactly. a reason. And we have to remember that. Yes. Even even it from the from the vineyard all the way to the restaurant or to the wine shop. It's the it's all, yeah. all one piece, all part of the same industry. Yeah. So yeah. Well that's great. Well again, Tonya, thank you so much. And um and cheers. Uh, which one are you going to cheer with? Uh, Litton Springs so, or the Pagani? <laughs> well, you know, I've, I've gone back to, to Litton Springs. And the one thing is, Litton, you always have to, to decant it and put it in a decanter so that it can just open up and, uh, and really go mm -hmm. and, um, and get the aeration. It needs to really shine. And so what's probably going to happen, I'm going to sit that to the side. And that will be my afternoon delight, so to speak, which is later in the afternoon. <laughs> um, but um, I'm going to have a little bit of Bagani Ranch, and I'm thinking of what I can put together right now and have a little snack and uh, a light lunch with this. I've got, um, hmm. What do I want to do? I've got um, I've got some Cotswold cheddar cheese, mm -hmm. and I've got some tomatoes, and I have a little bit of arugula, and I'm going to make myself a little bit of a grilled cheese sandwich with arugula and Cotswold cheese and a little bit of tomato that I'm going to grill and put in between. Oh my gosh. Nice if, lunch. Uh, if, if, you, if you weren't an hour away, I would uh, be right over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds, sounds great. And I, I, for me, the, the Pagani is just this up and viscous and wonderful and yet lively. Yeah. I, it's just, yeah, it's awesome. And you know, some, a fruit salad with berries you know, strawberries. Yes. And a little bit of, uh, you could throw some fennel and some shaved, um, some shaved Parmesan, some hard aged Parmesan um, with that and you would be very happy. That's awesome. Especially if you're still somewhere where it's a little hot. Yes, which it is here today. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a here beautiful today day. too in San yeah. Francisco. It's a little, a little toasty, just yes. a little bit. <laughs> but uh, but those are my thoughts. And so. That's awesome. Well, cheers, again, everybody. Tony, yeah, cheers. Thank thank you for sharing yourself with us today. I really appreciate it. Ciao. Ciao.